Twist the spectrum. You are loved. You are valued. You are resilient. You got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides at aarp.org slash caregiving. It's 8 o'clock. Breakfast is being served at Ellen's downtown. Hello, I'm Jordan Hicks, and this is your Spectrum News in 90. A Travis County grand in May after the death of his roommate, that's one of the charges he's facing, along with charges related to a murder back in 2018. ERCOT has extended its weather watch status through next Friday, a sign of the 100 plus degree days and dry conditions we've been experiencing for weeks. We've broken energy, energy demand records 10 times so far this year and likely to do it again next week. And just ahead of kids heading back to school, it's a tax free weekend. It's a chance to save money on clothes, shoes, school supplies and backpacks. About $8 saved for every $100 you spend. That starts today and runs through Sunday. Now, let's get a check of your hyperlocal forecast and your weather on the ones. Listen, I know we're all sick of it, but the heat, it's not going anywhere for our weekend. 107, that's my forecast for Saturday. 108 on Sunday. We certainly could be breaking or tying some 105 dry and sunny all the way through the weekend and of course the beginning of next week. More details coming up in your seven day forecast. Hello, thank you for joining us here on Spectrum News One. I'm Todd Boatwright. Well, school is back in session for many Texas students and for many parents, school safety is top of mind. And this comes as all Texas schools are now required to have at least one armed guard inside. This goes into effect starting September 1st. As part of a law signed by Governor Abbott earlier this year after last year's mass shooting at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. And in San Antonio, armed guards aren't the only safety measure Southside ISD is taking. Our Lauren Kendrick shows us. There are now metal detectors. At this is what you'll see when trying to enter a school in the Southside Independent School District of San Antonio. Metal detectors at main entrances. It's two at each elementary, three at the middle schools, and then about eight at the high school. 36 in total, something Superintendent Orlando Ramirez says is necessary. With the uh, tragedy in Uvalde, uh, we felt that we had to uh, improve and enhance our security measures. But not before conducting several surveys in the community. At asking whether the community would be in favor of metal detectors. We had a uh, response of 80% of our parents saying that they were in favor of metal detectors. This back to school bash where 4,000 people were expected served as a trial run before classes officially begin. And we want to make sure that we have everything that we can from being, bringing a, a knife, a gun or any other weapon. The total cost for the metal detectors $80,000, which Superintendent Ramirez says came from a safety security grant for the district. Over in Frisco, safety measures have also been added, this time in the form of doorbell cameras. It's tied into our surveillance system, so uh, every time somebody comes up and presents a photo ID, we have a record of it, and it retains in our archives for the duration of 21 days. Kevin Haller, director of security for Frisco ISD, says before vetting of any visitor was done at the receptionist desk. This is how the new system works. When walking up to the schools, tells the parents that they have to have a photo ID when they press the doorbell and then it's alerted at the receptionist desk. They have the ability to look at the ID, match it up with the person that's standing in front of them and they can vet that. Haller feels the district has good systems in place. I think anything higher to security is what you have to look at. He says they'll continue to look at new advancements when they come available, hoping to deter those who want to do harm from ever entering school buildings. 
And meanwhile, a lot of Texas teachers are having to pick up extra jobs during the summer to make ends meet. According to the Austin American Statesman, more than half of the state's teachers have worked at least one additional job this summer. And out of those, nearly 80% said they needed the job out of financial necessity. Now this all comes after schools did not get the funding boost many were hoping during the last legislative session. Our J.J. Maldonado shows us how a central Texas district is now adjusting. So this was just another creative way for us to get uh, supplies to our children, but by way of having the community help us provide them to them. It's a call to action for the community of Lockhart. Dr. Stephanie Camarillo, the Deputy Superintendent of Lockhart Independent School Supplies, is the first time they've done this event. Uh, since 2000, uh, 2020, we've been able to provide these supplies uh, at no cost to the parents, but with the budget deficits that we had this year, we were unable to do that. In June, the district announced a $710,000 budget deficit going into the upcoming academic year. The district, unable to afford school supplies for its students, is just one of the cuts made to its annual budget. We were hoping that the legislation would provide some funding back to us this year so that we would not be in this situation, but unfortunately we are uh, and we're having to do a lot more with less this year. Lockhart ISD says they're one out of 150 school districts facing levels of underfunding from the state of Texas. Like many districts, they were hoping the state legislature during its recent legislative session would increase its spending for public education. Even though we're growing, our budget is. We had to get extremely creative with our staffing through attrition, not filling positions, uh, freezing, hiring. Nicole Weiser is the district's chief financial officer. She says the issue is a bit complicated and one that is happening across the state. The county's property appraisals in their district's taxing zone has not kept up with what the Texas Comptroller's property value estimates, leading to a deficit that the state will not fill. Uh, we're penalized through that state portion of, of, of what it costs to educate the students. They reduce the state portion that they say we need to educate our students because um, they reconciled those values and, um, and they didn't line up. Stephanie says they are looking at other potential revenue sources such as energy conservation and repurposing staff positions. One thing she says they will not cut back on is their investment. In Children first, we will never sacrifice our services to our kids. We may do things a little differently, may look a little differently, but it would never be at the expense of the education of our kids. Meanwhile, schools in the Rio Grande Valley are getting some financial help for certain programs. Governor Abbott announced nearly $10 million in grants for 11 schools to help support their career and technical education training programs. The governor says the money will help schools better train more than 2,300 students for high demand careers, things like health care, engineering, and construction. And coming up, Dallas Love Field's on the way to becoming more eco-friendly. We'll show you the technology paving the way next. And later we'll speak with a Texas mom going the extra mile to make sure her daughter's diagnosis isn't holding her back from enjoying all the sweet things life has to offer. Stay with us. Stay connected to Spectrum News 1 with the Spectrum News app. Stream your trusted team live on the go or from home. And stay updated on the local news and weather forecasts that matter to you. Spectrum News, your community connection. Weather can be beautiful and at times powerful. Our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. Weather on the ones on Spectrum News 1. At Spectrum, we know how much you depend on the reliability of our products and services. Forward in reliability by identifying potential service issues before they become a problem. If you're affected, we'll contact you and help schedule a free service appointment with one of our expert technicians. The proactive maintenance of our network is one of the many reasons Spectrum delivers the most reliable internet speeds in the nation. Spectrum, keeping you connected. 
When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Texas holds a very special place in both my heart and my family's heart as well. My dad started in the news business. My dad was my idol. He was my mentor. I spent so much time in that world. I knew I just had to be a part of it. My life's purpose has been about informing, educating, and most importantly, connecting with people. It has been my passion to help people and make a difference in people's lives. I'm Brett Ship, anchor Spectrum News One. breathtaking slow motion video. This is from Jordan McClellan on the X platform of storms that occurred Thursday night west of DFW. This one in particular, he said, was a little bit closer to Abilene. Unfortunately, we could have used this rain, but a lot of it just kind of fell apart before they made it into DFW. You can see where we did get rain and it wasn't a ton. Some areas did rack up a little bit over an inch and a half, according to these estimates. But the moral of the story is we're not getting the rain where we need it. So that's what we had Thursday night. This is showing our potential through the next seven days. And this light green that we're seeing here doesn't tell me that it's promising. This tells me that we're maybe going to get trace amounts of rainfall, so not going to see any drought busting rain anytime soon. That's the bad news. We're going to see a whole lot more of this. This is our time lapse over UT Dallas from Friday afternoon, abundant sunshine, and of course the hot temperatures. Those stick around into the weekend. Saturday, I think we're making it up to 107. Sunday, maybe gaining a degree there, 108 for my forecast high. Going into the weekend, the two big stories are obviously the heat, but also the fire danger. So those are the uh, through the weekend, very high all the way across DFW. But then we still have those pockets of extreme fire danger, critical fire danger. So really, really, really need to refrain from doing any burning outside. We do have red flag warnings, not for Dallas County, but for Tarrant County and everybody else out to the west. So not that you're dying to get outside in this heat, but if you are spending time outdoors, Please refrain from burning. We have the heat and triple digits all the way through the next seven. Well, Texas is known for its oil and gas industries, but a lot of experts say the risk to the environment and to those that call the state home actually outweighs the rewards. Our Dylan Scott has more on that. I'll go out faster right to the middle. It's so important for us as Texans to protect our way of life by addressing. Knows the Eagle Ford Shale well. At 1,500 feet, thanks to a lift from EcoFlight and the Environmental Defense Fund, the executive director can do just that. Look for the quality of the flare is a little bit of smoky marbling. Providing a bird's eye briefing of the ongoing massive risk reward conversation. There's another flare at three o'clock because it's so powerful the moment that it's emitted and because we know that we can reduce these emissions today is a really important place to reduce emissions so that we can avoid these catastrophic warming impacts. As far as the eye can see on this South Texas horizon, oil and gas wells are flaring, creating a byproduct called methane, a precursor to air pollutants. Climate experts say the odorless gas produces 80 times more pollutants than carbon dioxide would in the next 20 years, resulting in billions of dollars in environmental, economic, and health concerns yearly. Makes it all more real. Scientists have been talking about and to see what exactly it is that's occurring right in our backyard. Back on the ground, Commission Shift and the EDF are nonprofits using this data to push reform for the oil and gas industries with activists such as Palacios and Elizabeth Liebernecht calling on the Environmental Protection Agency and a Railroad Commission to tighten regulations now. We need all companies to be subject to those standards so that we can 
level the playing field and ensure that these critical emissions reductions are happening across the industry, not just from the, the operators who make voluntary commitments to reduce these emissions. 96% of the products that we use on a daily basis uh, has a part of its basic building block, oil or natural gas. And I'm talking about things like makeups to medicines from tires to toothpaste. A balance within the boom. Thanks to advancements in filtering, monitoring systems, Todd Staples, president of the Texas Oil and Gas Association, says the state hopes to end routine flaring by 2030. According to the World Bank and Energy Information Administration, such practices decreased by almost 10% nationally from 2021 to 22. The largest reduction in a decade and a possible olive branch for the future. Taking care of our environment is a global responsibility. We think all industries and all individual citizens have a responsible role to play. And we're glad that no nation is doing more than the United States and no industry is literally doing more than oil and natural gas to make progress here. If Texas were a nation, it would rank among the largest polluters in the world. And while some progress has been made, Palacio says the environmental clock is ticking. If we could reduce methane today, we would see we would see benefits in terms of our climate within the next. In North Texas, new technology is coming to Dallas Love Field to help the airport be more sustainable. Our Nicolette Perdomo takes us onto the tarmac for a closer look. When these aircraft engines turn on, it's powerful. The propellers return. And you can see the wires, cables, and inside it's storing that electricity. Isaac Ellison, the environmental manager at Dallas Love Field, shows us new technology harnessing wind to generate cleaner energy. Either charging EV vehicles, devices, phones, tablets, laptops. Making this device and the turbines in the pod move fast. Once the checklist is complete, pilots are going to initiate the thrust to taxi out of the ramp to take off. So once they're doing that, the propulsion, the jet blast, is captured in this pod. This device called Jetwind then captures and converts the plane's turbine power right here. So inside this trailer here, there's multiple battery packs, essentially. Um, and then it's simple as there's outlet, so you can literally just plug up your charger to the batteries. The technology is only being tested at Dallas Love Field right now. Allison says the goal is to eventually add more of them to the runway to help power other equipment around the airport. Going forward, we would like to see uh, these pods at the end of the runway where they're able to capture more of that energy from the aircraft because obviously there's going to be more thrust needed for a takeoff versus a taxiing aircraft. Well, the weekend is here. That is the good news. The bad news, I mean, it's obvious. We are still just baking out there across the state of Texas. Triple digit heat both Saturday and Sunday for the majority of our metro areas. And I think that we will be in record territory. So the heat, our Saturday heat alerts staying in place. We have the excessive heat warnings as well as advice. Sixteen teams, fifteen grand. One tournament to decide who knows the most about separating news fact from news fiction. One, two, three, seven. That is correct, Jacob. The Spectrum News Challenge Tournament. That sounds really awesome, man. <laughs> if you think you know the news, then it's time to take the challenge. Spectrum News Challenge, Wednesday nights at 8.30. Available on all your favorite devices. When you buy Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 a month, you get a second line for free. So get one line for yourself and a free line for your devoted friend. Friend? Friend. Both lines for yourself. I use one for business and another for business. I do a lot of business. Get one line of unlimited for $29.99 and get a second line free for 12 months. Call Flick or visit a Spectrum store today. I don't remember how it started. Go to Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word.
We have one mission, and that is to serve our community. We have reporters on the ground sharing what's happening within their communities. It's my responsibility to know the issues here in Texas, but also, more importantly, sure that you know what's going on in politics and weather and entertainment. You're going to get your local news. You're going to get storytelling about your local community. Your evening on Spectrum News One. Weeknights starting at 5 p.m. Central. Many Texans are struggling with high prices in the checkout lanes. That includes businesses, which is to a San Antonio coffee shop to find out why. Natalie and her husband Bronson plan to offer something different when they first opened Press Coffee Shop. Yeah, I've been very adamant about having house made syrups and as much as we could do in house. But one thing she wishes she could make in house is oat milk. It's in high demand at Press Coffee. Four of these equals a gallon. A case of like a dozen. Um, so yeah, roughly 40 bucks. Plus, we're, we always have to get that from a specialty wholesaler. So it's not so like readily available. So we also have to tack on delivery charges and all that fun stuff. Plant-based milks can cost twice as much as cow milk. This has forced Natalie and several other coffee shops in San Antonio to raise their prices on oat. Something that, you know, I can get away with, you know, unfortunately that would eat into my bottom line tremendously. It costs less to make plant-based milk than it is to raise a cow and produce milk. Kind of suspect. Amalia, who owns vegan coffee shop Deer Dairy, says there are many factors as to why oat milk is almost 14% higher than it was last year. The most plant milk is manufactured packaged on the West Coast. A lot of these big companies are on the West Coast, so they're having to ship really heavy liquid across the country to you. Because the alternative milks are produced in quarts, it's costing more to package. Unlike the dairy industry, it's not subsidized by the government. Packaging and shipping is what you're paying for, and then the actual like food ingredient cost is just a small percentage of that final cost. She believes a manufacturer in Central Texas can bring down the cost of oat milk for local coffee shops across the state. Until then, the price of oat milk lattes are going to remain high. For now, we've got to deal with it, but, um, but yeah, it'd be nice to see it go down in price. And one tech for those with type 1 diabetes. Joining us today is Sarah Morris, the creator of Love Live Bake Shop, a bake shop that was made in honor of her daughter with type 1 diabetes. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. This is such an honor. Well, great. So first of all, what led, tell us what led to creating the bakery. Yeah. So actually four years ago, um, yesterday, our daughter Olivia was diagnosed with type one diabetes. Um, that began the journey, but what got us there was just a lot of symptoms that um, acted very similar to what a three-year-old does in the summer, drinks a lot of liquid, uh, uses the bathroom all the time, losing weight, um, and you and you and you chalk it up to she's just acting really normal. I mean, she's three; um, she's just very typical. Um, but when we strung all these symptoms together, it was very clear there was something more serious going on. And so, you know, through the help of you know Children's Medical uh, Center here in Dallas, we were able to, to diabetes. So. From that point forward, our life was all about adjustments and it was learning to live with this new reality, um, which cutting to the chase means um, you have to change um, the way you, you think about food. And um, I noticed I've spent you know 20 years in the food uh, marketing um, industry and I know a lot about you know food science and I, and I knew very quickly that there wasn't gonna be a lot of options for her to enjoy um, all the time. Correct. And there's not a lot of options for children with, you know, sugar restrictive diets. And so we we set out to change that. That's great. And that was, of course, one of the challenges. Also, you had some challenges when you opened the business. You have some challenges as a small business owner. How did that uh, end up? Yeah, I mean, we are you know, every day is a fight. Um, 
it's it's hard to run a small business. You know, resources, you know, funding, um, ingredients, those that you see on the shelf today. Um, and so there's a lot of challenges, but we believe the the end goal and the mission is to make this available for everybody because no one should have to choose between high sugary treats um, or living a healthy lifestyle. And so uh, we're continuing to press forward, but you know, every day, you know, you meet your own uh, set of challenges to keep things going. And for people out there wanting to know more about your cookies, what exactly is in them, uh, tell us about more what they can expect when they bite into one. Yeah, well, first of all, they're amazing. I would say they have been they have been approved by uh, my seven-year-old, Olivia, every step of the way, um, but they are 100% sugar-free, uh, which was our the beginning goal. Uh, they taste like a cookie you would get out of the bakery of a grocery store. Um, they are 100% gluten-free, and we make them with a nut-free flour base. Um, so those that have nut allergies can also enjoy the product. Um, they come in four different flavors. We have chocolate chip, sugar, peanut butter. I'm telling you, you put some ice cream between them right now, and they're an incredible summer treat. Uh, but they're great, um, and they are hopefully available to most um, as a way to supplement high sugary cookies, but also for kids that can't enjoy those. These are always a great option. All right, and now I've got a sweet tooth. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be right back. Thank Keep you. it here. <laughs> Thriving community is an informed community, and being able to play a role in bringing people the news is something that I take very seriously. There's just so many things to love about the state of Texas. Southern hospitality, great food. I love that there are so many different cultures celebrated. I want people to turn us on in the morning and feel like they've got the information they need to go out and conquer their day. I'm Alex Stockwell, anchor for Spectrum News One. Special Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. So I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. It's the best deal in mobile. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. Get one line for $29.99 and the second line is free. All with no taxes or your mobile unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-882-2999. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. We are connected, engaged from the moment we rise. We move. We adjust. We learn. So we're ready to build a better tomorrow. Stay informed throughout your day with the Spectrum News app, exclusively for Spectrum customers. Weather on the Ones, every 10 minutes, also available on the Spectrum News app. Good evening, Dallas-Fort Worth. Here's your Spectrum News in 90. Thousands of people lost power Friday morning in Wichita Falls. A storm hit the area last night, causing some damage downtown. No injuries have been reported. The American Red Cross set up in the area to help residents in need. Fire crews in North Texas have nearly contained the wildfire in Johnson County, southwest of Fort Worth. So far, the double-back fire has burned through 1,300 acres, and according to the Star-Telegram, at least two barns were destroyed. 
and residents in Frisco are sounding the alarm. A year old Frisco student, that student was fatally struck by a car. Was residents say residents say speeding on this road has been an ongoing concern. Now let's get a check of your hyperlocal Dallas Fort Worth forecast and your weather on the ones. I'm meteorologist Courtney Aiken. Here is an hour by hour look at your Saturday forecast starting off at 10 a.m. Already in the upper 80s. As we know, the heat up happens fast after lunchtime, quickly shooting into those triple digits. We will be at near record territory all the way through our weekend. Gusty winds out of the south, keeping fire danger very high. Stick around for the seven day forecast. Those high summer temperatures have led to more wild firefighters are handling the heat in the hill country. The firefighters here at Bulverde Spring Branch Fire Department are staying busy with all of the calls they're getting due to the extreme heat. The sirens at the Bulverde Spring Branch Fire and EMS Department seem to be getting lots of use lately. We have a lot of uh, acreage. It has the tendency to develop into to large area grass fires. Tariq Radbone has been with the department for 15 years, covering a 216 square mile area that firefighters know as urban interface. If you look out the bay here, um, you can see nothing but, but trees. But in, in between all those trees, there are many neighborhoods that are coming and being erected at that point. The potential of, uh, of calls for service regarding fires increases substantial. Extreme heat and dry weather is giving firefighters here even more to deal with. Here in the hill country, uh, we have uh, different than, than what you would see in the city. You can tell uh, there's a lot of uh, what we call fuel that is super dry. All this here can burn extremely fast. The calls never stop. Just 10 minutes into our interview. You can dispatch. This time it's a car accident, but another type of call is quickly becoming more common. 90% of our calls are medical related. Right now, specifically during this drought, uh, we are seeing an increase of uh, grass fires. Battalion Chief Radbone says if there were to be a grass fire call while they're on a call like this, someone else can respond. We have mutual aid departments. Uh, anytime that there is a large incident, for example, a grass fire, uh, we can call on these agencies that, that neighbor us for assistance and vice versa. In this day and age, uh, it's imperative that we all work together and uh, we assist each other. Besides good relationships with neighboring departments, this is their newest tool in fighting grass fires. This is uh, one of our new tenders. It's a tactical tender. It's, uh, it carries 1,800 gallons of water. It's also four-wheel drive. Allowing them to drive right into the thick brush regular trucks can't get to. Consider this a mobile hydrant. Out here in the hill country, uh, hydrants are, are few and far between, so we rely on apparatus like this to take water to the scene so they can fill brush trucks uh, in order to combat these fires. The extreme heat can also take a physical toll on firefighters, especially with all of the gear they have to wear. The gear that we have helps keep outside temperatures from getting in, but in retrospect, the internal temperatures don't get out of our gear, so they, they stay pretty hot in there. They wear roughly 75 pounds for structural firefighting and 35 to 40 pounds for wildland calls. For the men and women in EMS, it's just part of the job. We're uh, continuously um, prepping ourselves for the next call. According to census data, Hispanics are now the largest racial demographic in Texas, making up about 40% of the state's population. This is the first time non-Hispanic white Texans have not been the majority since the mid-1800s. And in Dallas, a group of Hispanic organizations are working to tell the history of Latinos in Texas, and they want to do that with a brand new museum. Here's Michael Lozano. A Mexican-American museum could become a reality in Dallas, with Fair Park being a potential location for that building. Organizations who are pushing to see this come to fruition tell us this is something that could benefit the entire state. Just about sharing the history and feeling once again, at that time, Texas was Mexican. As they are here inside of the Hall of State, 
on the Fair Park grounds. We're Indigenous people here, and the Spanish intermarried with the Indigenous, which is why we're, you know, Mexicanos and Mexicanos. It's why Gustavo Hinojosa wants an entire museum dedicated to its rich history. All that history is important. Gustavo is the president of the Mexican American Museum of Texas, a nonprofit that spent the last year working with city leaders to see that become a reality. The objective is really for the museum to represent the whole state. They're hoping city council will approve the museum to be a part of the 2024 bond election. We will be advocating um, on August 15th um, in front of uh, the task force. It's three different projects. They've even enlisted the help of architect students from UTSA, selecting three designs that could play a factor if the museum gets the green light. Trying to um, engage the next generation. With Mexican Americans being the minority majority in Texas, Gustavo says this museum would include the history of different parts of the state. Divide the state into nine different cultural regions and we are reaching out to each of those regions to represent themselves. Mayor Pro Tem Omar Narvaez tells us a museum to preserve and teach the general public about the contributions made by Latinos in Texas is important. We feel that it will be a cultural draw to Dallas which um, affects Dallas in a lot of economic ways. Right now, there's still a few steps away, but Gustavo is confident Mexican-American history will see the light of day. And coming up with college football season fast approaching, TCU is looking for redemption. We'll see how they're looking to build off last year on Spectrum News 1. Hey everybody, I'm Carla Leal. Organ and tissue donation is a monumental way people can help save a life. On the next In Focus Texas, we'll hear from lawmakers and Texas groups taking steps to encourage more people to give the gift of life. You don't want to miss it, so join us Sunday or set your DVR for all the details. I'll see you then. most satisfied when I'm making a difference. I get to go to work every day and communicate with fellow Texans who understand that quality of life matters and the choices we make matter. And if they can trust me to share important information with them, then I'm a happy camper. I'm Dr. Nicole Cross, anchor for Spectrum News One. From coast to coast, you've seen us around. We live and work in the communities we serve. Our commitment runs deep. We're invested here, creating good jobs and supporting small businesses, many of which we're proud to call customers. You count on us to keep you connected to what matters most. And we're committed to delivering you the best internet, TV, and mobile service. We're Spectrum, connecting the places we all call home. Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Weather can be beautiful, inconvenient, and at times, powerful. And it affects everything we do. At Spectrum News One, our weather experts update you with the information and the context you need so you can better plan your day. And we do it every 10 minutes. We're the calm in the storm. Weather on the ones on Spectrum News One. And get your weather anytime on the Spectrum News app. Breathtaking 
slow motion video. This is from Jordan McClellan on the X platform of storms that occurred Thursday night west of DFW. This one in particular, he said, was a little bit closer to Abilene. Unfortunately, we could have used this rain, but a lot of it just kind of fell apart. These storms, that is, they fell apart before they made it into DFW. You can see where we did get rain, and it wasn't a ton. Some areas did rack up a little bit over an inch and a half, according to these estimates. But the moral of the story is we're not getting the rain where we need it. So that's what we had Thursday night. This is showing our potential through the next seven days. And this light green that we're seeing here, doesn't tell me that it's promising. This tells me that we're maybe going to get trace. Not going to see any drought busting rain anytime soon. That's the bad news. We're going to see a whole lot more of this. This is our time lapse over UT Dallas from Friday afternoon, abundant sunshine, and of course the hot temperatures. Those stick around into the weekend. Saturday, I think we're making it up to 107. Sunday, maybe gaining a degree there, 108 for my forecast high. Going into the weekend, the two big stories are obviously the heat, but also the fire danger. So those are the, two, the big two, heat and fire danger. And you're looking at your fire danger forecast from Texas A&M. Uh, through the weekend, very high all the way across DFW, but then we still have those pockets of extreme fire danger, critical fire danger. So really, really, really need to refrain from doing any burning outside. We do have red flag warnings, not for Dallas County, but for Tarrant County and everybody else out to the west. So not that you're dying to get outside in the, all the way through the next seven. We are just a couple of weeks away now from college football season and TCU is looking to make a comeback. Our Robbie Fueling shows how last season's shortfall is motivating the team to go even farther. Duggan takes a knee, fitting that the football is in his hands as they march on to the championship game. It was a magical run with a nightmare finish. Down the middle, the cockies wide open touchdown dogs. You know, we got our ass kicked, and we deserve to get our ass kicked because you know we weren't ready and we didn't perform at the level that we should have. And you know, we didn't finish how we wanted to, but it is what it is. Uh, it's just, I mean, we can't, I'm not gonna give you no excuse or nothing like that. We just played bad. But sometimes the biggest lessons stem from the lowest moments. I mean, look, man, we're gonna work hard no matter what. Our players are gonna work hard no matter what, whether you're pick 12th or whether you're pick first. Um, these guys invest so much time and so much work. And I mean, our guys are up at 4.30 in the morning. 300 days a year. All the blood, sweat, and tears for one purpose. Let's go! To win a championship. But they'll have to do so without the likes of Quentin Johnston, Kendra Miller, hey, man, they asked for we can look. Trey Hodges Thomason, Darius Davis, and Max Duggan, just to name a few. Eight total Horn Frogs are now pros in the NFL. So how do you replace a Heisman runner-up? Well, Chandler knows that he has big shoes to fill next year for, you know, the stuff that Max kind of left TCU with. Um, you know, I, I'm excited for him and just to see where he can go with it. He's definitely, he's definitely very hungry. But Duggan's impact wasn't just limited to the damage he inflicted on opposing teams between the white line. Going to the national championship. Big one coming up. That's the one we want. Let's go. Having a chance to watch Max last year, you know, I think it probably taught him, look, I don't have to go out there and win every game. You know, I have a really good supporting cast. He's going to be there early. He's going to be at every meeting. You know, he, he's going to be, you know, finishing first on, on in our runs. He's, he's going to be throwing extra with the receivers. So, um, you know, it, it's just a different type of leader um, that he is. And, you know, I, I think it'll pay off for him tremendously. My God. Morris got away from him. Unbelievable. He's Houdini. Taylor Morris. Hello. And really, how do you do? You know, there has been a kind of a blue collar chip on their shoulder mentality that that I think is important for us to have thing that's made TCU TCU over the last 20 years and, and it's important that we continue that mentality and build it off of that and down the road in Austin expectations for the Texas Longhorns are as high that are causing a lot of the hype Jordan Whittington couldn't find the exact words I don't know, man. It's just something about the love we all got for each other. But the fifth-year receiver believes this Texas team is built differently. I don't know. 
<laughs> Come on, bro. What you got going on, bro? I think we're more powered by love than we've ever been. I think we trust each other more than we ever have. I think we believe in what we're doing more than we ever have believed it. And I think when you mix those things together, it's really hard to stop that mixed with the amount of talent we have. And it's the receiver room that's leading the way in that category. The Horns pass catching group is expected to be one of the best in college football. What I love about the room now is the versatility of the room. It starts with the reliability of Whittington and the big playability of Xavier Worth. Physicality of an Isaiah Nair and an A.D. Mitchell and their ability to stretch the field and go up and make one-on-one -on -one contested catches. A skill that Mitchell illustrated in the spring game after transferring in from Georgia. Throw in talented freshmen like Jonte Cook and DeAndre Moore, and you can see why there's so much hype. I think this group provides opportunities for us that we, we can do some different things and, and not feel so kind of static or one dimensional that, that we have now some variety to our game and moving people around. Freshman year, we didn't really have the depth that we have now. I feel like anybody in our receiver room could come in and produce the same way that the first group did. And hopefully take some pressure off Worthy, who's looking to bounce back after an inconsistent sophomore year. We just go in every day just with something to prove. Um, we, we left a lot on the table last year, and um, I feel like we just have a chip. Eight Texas sisters embarking on a new journey this fall as they all head to college together. Find out why they're called a triple threat when we come back. Well, the weekend is here. That is the good news. The bad news, I mean, it's obvious. We are still just baking out there across the state of Texas. Triple digit heat both Saturday and Sunday for the majority of our metro areas. And I think that we will be in record territory. So the heat continues. Don't hold your breath for any breaks from it. And at least through our Saturday heat alerts staying in place, we have the excessive heat warnings as well as advisors. The strength of Texas is in its many voices and unique perspective and more. Balanced and respectful discussion of the serious matters impacting Texas from experts across the state. We take a closer look at the issues in your community. In Focus Texas, Sunday mornings at 930 on Spectrum News 1, available on all your favorite devices. So you're telling me this one size fits all network upgrade is the best you guys can do? Better than that, it's the only thing we do. That's how we know it's right for you. Aye, aye, aye. Is this what I said? No, I think you were okay. Ah! I think that's a yes. We get it. Ask for the technology you need, and they call you unreasonable. We call you something else, our kind of client. So go ahead, be unreasonable. I'll be here to hear what's on your mind. Take this time to talk and get it right. I'll be there all your life. When you need me, I'll be by your side. Little everyday conversations about the dangers of underage drinking can make a big difference in a child's life. Today at Zilker Park, where folks from across the state of Texas are coming together for the discussion. At Spectrum News, we're committed to our communities around the clock, delivering stories that inspire and news that matters in your community. Our journalists are dedicated to bringing you trusted, balanced local news every day. And now, Spectrum Internet-only customers, you can watch Spectrum News 1 on your TV, connecting you to your community 24-7. Spectrum News, now streaming, exclusively for Spectrum customers.
For the first time ever, scientists have found fossils of a Jurassic sea creature here in Texas. Veronica Bariga introduces us to the researchers behind this landmark discovery. Got it up there? Yeah, I saw him there. You can see we're kind of running out of space on the shelves. People will find a lot of stuff in Texas. Kenneth Bader is the laboratory manager at UT Austin's Jackson School of Geosciences, Museum of Earth History, where a variety of ancient artifacts are preserved. 250,000 cats. is a lead researcher at the university. We have lots of fossil things like this clam, the Jurassic, from the Malone Formation. So lots of marine invertebrate life ammonites, snails, clams. But Steve was on a mission to find more. In 2016, Steve led Kenneth and a team of geoscientists on a hunt for ancient traces of larger life in the Malone Mountains. And then I ran across this one little line here, contains large bone fragments. That was in this 1938 paper, and it was that phrase which said, this is where we got to go. We got to go look at the Malone Mountains. The crew trekked up here. a rough terrain in and West Texas. And you can see Kenny here breaking through some rocks and, and Josh taking some notes. Eventually making a new type of discovery, coming across Jurassic Age marine life vertebrae, marking the first time these type of bones have been uncovered in the state of Texas. And um, it sits on here like this. This is the, uh, it's called a neural arch. The spinal cord would go down through. A study of the fossils published in 2023 says the bones likely belong to a plesiosaur, the marine reptile shown here. It's a big deal just because throughout Texas history, we've always taught students that there are no Jurassic vertebrates from Texas. We don't have a record of what vertebrate life looked like in the Jurassic in Texas. And now we're beginning to open up that story because of the work in the Malone Mountains. A story that Kenneth says is only at the beginning stages. That we found some bones, it makes me want to keep going back over and over and try to find a skeleton. And maybe someday we'll be able to do that. Well, triplets are rare, occurring in just one of almost 7,000 pregnancies. Well, Concordia University, Texas in Austin will soon get a real triple. Kenley and Riley Jakes, who began your freshman year at the same college, Concordia. So how do you guys, what do you guys think about that? Um, I think it's pretty cool that we'll have the um, college experience together because we've always um, been together from pre-K all the way to high school. So that was kind of planned that you'd go to the same college? No, sir, not I at wasn't. all. We actually had all planned to go to different colleges. Really? Yes, sir. And they had a, how did you, again, how did you guys come to this conclusion that you'd come to? We all just, like, love things about Concordia. And also, too, I guess, I was going to ask you, too, do you guys have any of the same classes? Kind of, kind of drive your instructors crazy. We have the same, <laughs> same schedule. schedule. The same, Since what did you decide to do that? Well, we're both the same major. major. Which is? Nursing. Oh, nice. So that you'll have the same schedule there. Um, what, I guess, what are you guys most excited about your off at school? The new opportunities and getting to make new friends and interactions with people and, like, exploring, getting to um But I used to know other people and that kind of thing. Well, growing up, yes. what were, the, I guess, some of the challenges of being triplets, especially when you go into a, a public setting, into, you know, growing up in elementary school, you know, middle school, high school. What are some of the challenges of being triplets? I mean, I guess just people mixing you up for each other. Because mm -hmm. like, like comparing each other, like they compare us to each other yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. How's that? What do you think about that? It's like we're, we're all just like normal people, like if we were all a year apart or anything, we're just all different as everyone else. So what's it going to be like, you think, starting school with your siblings? And what, are you, what do you think people's reaction is going to be? Um, well, we've had tons of um, reactions already from everyone's like, oh, y'all are triplets. Like, that's so cool. Do y'all, like, do the same thing and have the same interests? But the answer to that question is no. We're all different. We all have different interests. And what's your major going to be? Mine is kinesiology. Okay. So not nursing. No, sir. <laughs> so what do you guys think about her being kin kinesiology and you guys joining forces on nursing? Like you said, it probably goes back to the fact you're individuals. Yeah, I mean, I guess 
Well, I'm doing nursing for now, but I'm going to further. And I want to be a doctor, but oh, nice. um, I, me and Riley did high school clinicals this year. So we got to shadow nurses. And so I had a really good nurse in my life. And so she inspired me to be a nurse first and then become a doctor to see how doctors treat nurses. Oh, great. Because I want to be a good doctor. Well, great. Well, good luck to all of you. Appreciate it. Thank Keep you. Yeah. The decisions elected officials make really have an impact on all of us. A big part of what we do on Capitol tonight is break down the issues so that they're easily understood. We wanna bring you a better understanding of local issues and the local impact of national issues with relevant in the context for Texans in a balanced and informative way. Capitol tonight, weeknights at seven on Spectrum News One. They say the best things in life are free. That's why Spectrum Mobile is giving you one free mobile line when you buy one unlimited line for $29.99. Hey, so I can get two lines for the price of one? That's right, for just $29.99. <laughs> Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months with no contracts. Call 1-844-537-2999, visit spectrum.com slash get connected or Spectrum store today. It's the best deal in mobile. Free mobile sounds good. But is the service reliable? Absolutely. Spectrum Mobile is super reliable, coast to coast. OK, but what's the catch? Is it contracts? No contracts, no catch. Get one line for $29.99, and the second line is free. All with no taxes or hidden fees. Whew. Man, I'm switching to Spectrum. The Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $29.99 a month, and get a second unlimited line free for 12 months. Call 1-844-537-2999.